It looks straight. Doesn't feel very natural though. Hmm. Okay. So, we're going into the pyramid. And I'm gonna do some upgrades and some stuff like that. Uh before we get going. In the meantime I bought some carbon crystal so I could upgrade that. Um more range damage. I'm definitely like super fond of the sniper arrows. And I have a build point and I really can't decide. I got hmm, can't get that. Shield charge seems cool. Horse hijack seems nice. Overpower combo I really like because if you get the blades you can do like the stabby stab and that's so fun. Um, chain throw, eight three, double power that seems useful. I don't know what to get. That's pretty useful when you fight like the Philokites and things. Not very useful most of the time. Just the harass. Yeah, that I guess that is useful. Then you can distract people and they won't spot you sneaking up on them. I really I feel like I really want this though. Stealing the horse, that's useful. Though probably not for. Hi there. Good to see you. Uh, if you were here last week, sorry if I missed you guys. I was having issues with Vodafone. Um, oh yeah, we're going into the pyramid. I'm about to do it right now, actually. Just gonna let's just go in through all my inventory and stuff. And oh wow, this is way better sword. Yeah. Internet troubles. Ancient alien landing pads. Yeah. Um, I think just spaceships, right? Like, they're just they're just the bones of giant spaceships. I actually do love... I, I think I saw, like, some, like, speculative art online that was, like, the pyramids as, like, the landing pads for, like, this, you know, triangular-shaped spaceship. And I was like, that's so good. I love that idea. I mean, it's... I don't believe that it's literally true, but it's such a cool concept. Um, and Stargate is one of my favorite movies ever, so, you know, definitely into that stuff from, like, a fictional standpoint. Oh, I need to go find this treasure, too. But pyramids come first. Okay. Drawing of the Great Pyramid. Something beneath the tomb. Alright, let's go get it. To leave the horse out here. See what we can find. Oh, cool! Melissa in denial. Do we? You. Oh, who dare to here? enter here? What silence has befallen her? A magi who has treaded many dunes to find you. Hide if you must, hyena. But this tomb will not protect you. I demand that you stop here. Turn back now and I will excuse this intrusion. Siwa was an intrusion. Um, oldest attestation of any Semitic language. I don't know. I can't think of any words in the pyramid text that I remember off the top of my head that are clearly of Semitic origin. I mean, there are plenty of cognates. Okay. Oh, I can I can go look. I mean, Wikipedia generally has really good information. I haven't read everything on there, um, but um, the, you know, it's it's well sourced. Possessor of magic, the gods live here, not you. What sort of mischief is she entertaining? Mm, gotta go down in that hole. Don't really want to do that. Well, I guess I should have been talking about, like, the layout of this space. Um, list of languages by first accounts. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that. That sounds that sounds really cool. Um, I, I'm 
you know, I, I haven't looked at it, but I would guess that that's probably correct. Um, which means there must be some Semitic... I can't think of what that would be. I and mean, I've read the Pyramid Text of Unus. Uh, my, my advisor in grad school was like, that's, you know, he's like the world's greatest living expert on the Pyramid Text. And I read them with him, and um, I just... It doesn't automatically ring a bell. I'm trying to see the layout here. That's why I'm going back. That's right. I'm going backwards to see the layout. So there are these um, diagonal shafts, and this is all pretty accurate. Um, the they're they're smaller than this. Like when you go in in the real pyramids, you have to crouch down and, and kind of like shuffle because they're not. You can't stand upright uh, until you get into the burial chamber, and it's not laid out exactly the same. Like I don't remember this. Drop be gone! Osiris cannot be disturbed. This trap door. What is it protecting? Heathen! The wakeful one is asleep! Go no further, or I will drench these arid plains with your blood! Um That I, I'm not totally sure. Um It's a good question. I thought I missed a trap door or something, so I went backwards. Um Oh, it's one of these things. I forgot about this. What is this place? So did the I ancient Egyptians enter tool. the pyramids? I mean, the the people who buried the pharaoh would have entered them. Um, and I think it's also the case that... Um, what gruesome madness happened I know that people entered during that the Middle Ages. I, I really don't know if people before. entered in between, like between, you know, the Old Kingdom and the burials, and, um, you know, like Arab chroniclers. Okay. Um, Still warm. That the ceremonial knife. That seems right to me. This was a sacrifice. Um, so. You know, tomb robbers entered tombs, and from the tomb robbery papyri, they were clearly, like, not at all respectful. But I imagine if if someone were talking to, like, a visiting tourist, they would have insisted on, like, not breaking into the tombs, because they were still sacred spaces. Um, and, you know, even today, like, you, you can go into the pyramids, but um, you can't just wander in there. Yeah, cool. I'd, I'd love to hear about it. Offerings to Osiris. Protector of the dead. What is that offering? What is that thing? Looks like a smashed pot? Not sure what sort of offering that is. The sarcophagus is decorated with goddesses of the mother. That's Fine a very, very it. late. Coffin for an old king and tomb. I know what these Haliset was after here. Haliset was doing a ritual. She began by calling to Osiris with these offerings. She used a knife to sacrifice her captives. Oh man, that's dark. She collected their blood for some dark purpose. She was attempting to learn these strange symbols. She must have found them in this room. When she knew the symbols, she carved them here and ended the ritual with one final prayer over the sarcophagus. Haliset must be trying to bring someone back to life. Mm. But just who is buried down here? My head looks so crooked. <laughs> oh, I can't straighten it. That's so annoying. Okay. caretakers would by no means show them as they were. They said the burial vaults of the kings who first built the this labyrinth. Oh, I have to open the sarcophagus. Child. Okay. My child! Oh, she's got hyenas with her. You lost your child. I haven't. Her rest is temporary. You have intervened on her reawakening. And yet you aligned yourself to the order. Ravage this tomb. Halicet! Don't you dare say my name! 
My name does not merit your lips, you who have dishonored her. I am a good mother. Yeah! Ah. I have to chase after her. Let me see if there's probably like valuable silica things in here. I'm gonna go get them first. Um, well, so this involves human sacrifice, which uh, was practiced in Egypt very early on in like the proto dynastic period, but uh, was ended pretty quickly. Uh, it was definitely not carried into the Old Kingdom um, or any later time. So I I think it's pretty safe to say they would have disapproved of the human sacrifice component. Um, but magic in general, ancient Egyptian magic, um, we say magic for lack of a better word uh, because, you know, that's that's the closest English word. But like magic includes things like medicine um so like um Come medical texts with coward. prescriptions i'm not scared of you i'm trying to find all the good stuff uh medical texts include um you know real medicine like um like poultices and, and herbal concoctions and all these kinds of things that would have been effective and they included like magical things and we divide those today into two categories uh, but they wouldn't have because the world is just a mysterious place and it's not clear why things work sometimes. Uh, love spells? I don't think they would have disapproved of love spells. We actually have quite a few love spells. A lot of our magical texts include love spells, actually. That's a really common thing that you see in ancient magical texts. So, um... Oh, thanks for coming. Um... So, um... So, yeah, that's... It's, it's, it's kind of funny how many love spells there are. It's... There's, um, when you read them, there's something just very human about them. You know, to want to, like, intervene in matters of the heart is just kind of universal to the human condition. Um, I don't think they would have disapproved. I, I think the part where she sacrificed someone, I'm pretty sure people would have disapproved of that. Uh, because that, I mean, no in the same way that, that we would today, like murdering someone is not okay. Um, and they definitely would not have thought that it was, even for, like, magical purposes. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they were necessarily... Oh man, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Fire. Um, that doesn't mean that they would have disapproved of, like, using magic to, like, I mean, a, a love potion is, when you think about it, is a pretty creepy thing to do. Um, it's kind of, like, coercing someone into a sexual relationship is definitely not an okay thing. Um, but, uh, but they had those, so they clearly weren't super strict about what you were allowed to do with magic. Um, and then there are, there are you know, curses, so you would just literally try to harm someone with magic. Uh, and, and those things exist. Okay, I'm missing something, but I guess it's just those arrows. Or something over there. Did I already come here? It seems like I did. Nope, maybe not. Now I will show oh you man. What to those who desecrate my daughter's tomb. This is like the necropolis and all the, the nobles' mastabas. So we're gonna fight running around on rooftops. This should be interesting. Um, oh, and she can hide. And now everyone is gonna see how bad at video games I am. Because I have to try to fight this boss fight with an audience. Wonderful. Uh, oh man, she almost got me. Whoa, and she did get me. Missed. Aha, I dodged. Kind of. Oh man, that actually does some damage. That's pleasing. Ah, she got me. 
Uh, still got me. Tried to dodge. No measure of magic can bring our children back. Oh, shield! Yes, I always forget about my shield. I'm so I'm so bad at games. It's so funny that I do this streaming when I'm just like, I'm not coordinated in the oh, real world sad. or the virtual world. Um, it's just that's how it is. I'm an academic, not by accident. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> got it. Shield. Shield was a good tip. Let's see if I can spot her. There she is. Oh, missed her that time. Okay. I'm gonna try to catch her. <laughs> protect me from this defiler. I have come only for you, Hyena. The gods need not be involved. You have oh, to wow. You cannot defeat me, Medjay! I bet I can, actually. I'm doing surprisingly well. In spite of my lack of skill. Oh, hyenas are coming after me. I hear them growling. So you did a full stream of... of um, I think you said Origins. You did a playthrough. I'll go check that out. I lost her. There they are. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Fail. Uh. Hyenas are... They're like striped hyenas. I think the ones you normally see in the game are spotted hyenas. Striped hyenas are apparently are way more dangerous. Ah, oh, he got me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play all the DLCs too. I'm I'm a pretty obsessive completionist to the point that people have like made fun of me for I use like the little like ninja smoke bombs to to get arrows so they stop showing up when I do the uh you know, scan for loot thing. Aha. Uh -huh. forget about that like R1 R2 overpower thing. Should use that more. Let's see what that does. Oh yeah, fighting mode. Awesome. She's probably just going to disappear again. Oh, that was actually really effective. Oh. Hmm. The, uh, the DLCs with, like, the afterlife and stuff are just so good. Uh, you can't leave that out. Do I walk among the dead now? A just end. You defiled the dead and enabled the people who killed my son. The, uh, uh Nefertiti's, like, the Field of Reeds is exactly like I imagined it. Well, not exactly, but pretty close. You saw it. Didn't you? These symbols only needed to be learned. It is not meant for us. Oh yeah. It makes no difference. Um, Neb, Neck, Neck. So Neb is Lord or like and Sir. And death. Neck is no fuck. They use Fegin too, which is Osiris. shit. There's a, there's a whole bunch of them. Please um, grant me reunion. She walks alone in the field of reeds. <sighs> I think so, yeah. I just want my daughter back! Please! She has like a very relatable motivation for a villain. That's always good. She's like somewhat sympathetic. Well, I don't feel like I know much of her story. I don't know if I missed something. It seems like I just found her and killed her like right away. May you find your daughter in the afterlife, Haliset. May the Lord of the Duat guide you. Okay. Um. 
I want to go back in the pyramids. Because there's more stuff to find in there. Looks like there's an entrance right there. Or maybe I go in them as part of a quest. Is, is Kuso like a swear word? It does look really great. I, I say that every single time I play. I just... I think this game looks really, really good. And I say that knowing like how ridiculous that's probably going to sound in, in 10 years when graphics are like photorealistic, but I, I think it will still look pretty good because it's just, this landscape is so cool. I love it. Ah, I see. So not one people actually say. I've noticed that in a lot of languages, swearing is uh, not like it is in English. Uh, so the historical things, they do a really good job. Um, it's not perfectly accurate 100% of the time, and I, I wouldn't expect it to be, but um, I, I recommend it to people who study ancient Egypt. I, I think you can really learn a lot playing this game. Um, and the main thing that you get, uh, in my opinion, is just this, like the ability to kind of walk around in this place. Um, that is, it's really not something you can get. I mean, you could go to, you could go to this place in real life and walk around and it still looks an awful lot like this, except it doesn't have the casing stones. Um, but like the, the towns and villages and those sorts of things, there's just, there's no way to experience that. Um, so I, I wrote a paper about this. I caught, I said, um... I titled it Video Games as Time Machines. Um, and then I basically argued that like this is the closest thing we've ever seen to a, a time machine, which is, I think, what everyone who studies this subject like secretly wishes for, is even if, you know, just for a moment to like actually go see this place that we study, because you're, you're always studying it at a distance. Culture and history, you want to play? Yeah, it is just super fascinating. Uh, so my dissertation was about uh, my attempts to digitize the Demotic script. So Demotic is a, a later Egyptian script. It's actually a, a handwritten... You should. Uh, my wife is an archaeologist. Um, she, she, she managed it. So, um, yeah, it, it can be done. Uh, okay, this is the... This looks like it will lead to the burial chamber. Got this upward sloping passage. Uh, well, oh, PhD dissertation. Yeah, demotic script. So, um, oh, this is the grand gallery. Neat. This giant Corbel arch. So it's a it's an arch that's made of um, like stacking stones uh, slightly inward until you get to the top. Uh, so it's a it's a more primitive form of arch than the you know the more famous Roman arch uh, but it's oh there's there's things I can light these things we can look at it okay so demonic script is this ancient Egyptian handwritten script uh, from the late period until the Ptolemaic period um, it is extremely difficult to read very few people can read it even Egyptologists most of them can't read it if they studied it at all uh, but we have a huge amount of text, so there's there's an online database that collects metadata on all these texts, and it lists over 20,000 demotic texts. So there's a huge wealth of data on this script, uh, but it's really hard to read. Um, we could do some really cool... Oh, here's the burial chamber. Yes. And the sarcophagus. Note that the sarcophagus is bigger than the entryway. It's an important point. It's too big to have fit through the door, so it must have been built inside of the pyramid, which for me is the best proof you're ever going to get that these are definitely tombs um, and not something else. These are some of the little, like, they're called air shafts, but they're not really air shafts. They're like um, ways for the the king's ba to, like, leave the tomb and, and go to the stars. Egyptian Greeks worship any Egyptian deities other than... Yeah, absolutely they did. Um, oh, there she is. 
Yeah, Jamondu. If you want questions about being an archaeologist, that's the lady to ask. She is one. Um, I'm the wrong person to ask, incidentally. I'm I'm not an archaeologist. Uh, I'm like a text person. So anyway, about demonic text, we have this huge wealth of data. Um, it's, it's full of really interesting information, especially about the language, because uh, demotic kind of sits neatly between the Coptic language, which we know just about everything about. I always tell people, like, you could teach a child to speak Coptic, and uh, they could learn it as a first language. We, we, we know how to speak that language. Uh, and then there's demotic in between, and then there's the hieroglyphic Egyptian from earlier periods that we really don't know we know some things about it, but we don't know everything about it. We don't really know it as a spoken language. Uh, so demotic is this wonderful link between those two things, something that we know really well and the really cool, you know, script written with birds and, and people and things that everyone wants to learn, but we you can't learn it as like a spoken language. Uh, so if we could analyze those texts, we could probably learn a lot of things, but they're all just like sitting in collections. So I wanted to find a way to digitize the script so that we could build a digital text corpus so that we could then study it with like uh, computational linguistics approaches and things like that. Uh, but it's really hard to do. So uh, I had some success. It wasn't a failure, but uh, it's still a long way from being, you know, fully viable. And that I, I knew that. So I was just kind of like trying to push the, the technology forward a little bit so that we could, um, you know, make some progress on that. And it, it is, it's getting pushed forward in a lot of ways. So I think maybe in, in 20 years we could have a demotic text corpus, but not yet. Okay, let's read this thing. There's a commoner called Jedi Rowe who lives in Jed Snefru. Commoner, 110 years old, uh, who eats 500 loaves of bread, a shoulder of beef for meat, and drinks 100 jars of beer up to this day. He knows how to mend a severed head. He knows how to make a lion walk behind him with his leech on the ground. He knows the number of chambers of the Sanctuary of Toth. So that's a quote uh, from a real... Egyptian texts um, about uh, it's set in the time of King Hufu and this this is Hufu's pyramid so it's an appropriate place for this text to be um, and his story is about this magician who can perform all these tricks so he like uh, they they cut the head of a goose and put it on opposite sides of the of the palace and then he says some magic and the, like the the head goes back onto the goose and it comes back to life and all this cool stuff um, so yeah that's that's a quote from a real ancient Egyptian story uh, set in Hufu's court okay this this does not really exist um, there's not really a chamber like this filled with uh, all kinds of ancient treasures. Yeah, I think so. I haven't read it in quite a long time, so I don't remember everything, but, uh... What am I supposed to do with this thing? Let's push it. Aha. Oh, man. Oh, I have to, like, let the sand out to open this door. I got it. A little, a little slow on the uptake there. Ha. Skills. Okay, let's read some stuff. Cool. Um, well, let me look back at that. Let's see if there's anything to talk about. Oh, King, you're this great star. I think this is taken from the Pyramid Text, actually. This reads like a quote from the Pyramid Text. And that association with, like, the stars and with Orion, uh, that's all present in the, in the real Pyramid Text. Uh, which is something that I think is really interesting. So there's this there's this idea that like the location of the pyramids aligns with the stars in Orion's belt, which actually isn't true, but very well could be true because they were kind of obsessed with Orion. Uh, he's associated with Osiris, um, and he has lots of mentions in the pyramid texts. Whom Hufui, son of Snefru and Queen Hetaperi, is the first bringer of light, saffron robed, saffron robed. Um, Beloved of the Golden Orb and the Silver Sun. Cool. I don't know if that's a real text, but it could be. Except the saffron part. You, uh, I mean, crocuses are well known in, in the ancient Mediterranean, but I don't know of Egyptians using saffron. I've never seen ancient that. writing from the Old Kingdom. People are happy when they're building pyramids. That's great.
Not getting all the loot. I'm failing as a completionist. Okay. Am I leaving money on the table here? No. Alright, and let's get this thing. Oh, did I already do this? Oh my gosh, I just blanked it out. I've done so many of these things. Uh, it's not actually old kingdom text. It's actually, it looks like much later text has been kind of copy-pasted together. Just FYI. Um, still fun, though. <laughs> Do the Egyptians enjoy building pyramids? Kind of yes, actually. Um, so we have uh, we have lots of records now of like the actual building of the pyramids. I think they were actually happy. So they they had they were divided into clans, and their clans had different names. And um, and some of the texts they um, they talk about themselves and what they're doing in a way that definitely makes it seem like they're not um, makes it seem like they're they're there by choice. Um, they're not being forced to work on these things. And in a sense, they were they were actually getting paid. So. Uh, we think that they probably would have had a lower tax burden. Oh, this is cool. Oh my gosh, this vaulted ceiling. That really exists. I don't know if it's exactly here in terms of location. Um, but there are, like, uh, granite vaulted ceilings like that inside the pyramids. They're pretty neat. Um, so the way it worked is, so the, the Nile River floods every year. And while it is flooded... Um, you, you really can't do anything as a farmer. Like, you can't go out and work. Um, and, like, you can't do much to increase your land's productivity during that time. You kind of just have to hang out and wait for the flood to go back down. And it fertilizes your field, and then you plant crops for the next year. Um, so the pyramids were probably built during that time period using conscripted workers. Um... And uh, those people would have benefited from doing this. They would have uh, they would have got room and board. They probably would have had a lower tax burden, so they were getting paid for it at a time when they would have been idle. Maybe known that Kata worked on this great edifice until he died. He was a stonemason. That might be a real graffito inside the Great Pyramid too. So there are there are real graffiti like that. Um, there's one that I've seen that's like written in, in red ink in the relieving chambers above the burial chamber. Um, so yeah, there there are there are hieroglyphic inscriptions inside the Great Pyramid, um, and there are the pyramid texts inside of other pyramids. So the next time someone tells you there are no hieroglyphic inscriptions in the pyramids, that's totally not true. Uh, it's just something that like pseudoscientists made up. All right. I'd say that was pretty successful. I got an Abilla point. Oh, this was the entrance I was trying to find before. I'm on like the... Oh, no, I'm not. Where am I? I got so turned around. Hmm, I need to go in the other pyramids. I might do that in a minute. I don't want to get too... I don't want to overdo it with the pyramids. There's like a question mark activity right here. Looks like... Oh, papyrus puzzle. I love papyrus puzzles. There should be a, a really big sphinx around here somewhere. I'm, I'm so turned around. Oh, there it is. Okay. Alright, so this is a great pyramid. Um, it still has its uh, gold permidion on top that we can go look at. Oh, there's another treasure chamber in there, too. Is that inside the pyramid, or is it behind it? Oh, it's behind it. Okay, so over there. And then there's this, which is pretty neat. Um, that's the name of Hufu, right there. And there, there are inscriptions on here. Let's say... Well, a bunch of things. Uh, not sure. 
I think I need to climb up here too. Let's see. Do I need to climb up here? Yeah, I do. All right, let's do it. Let's check out some of these inscriptions. Got it. I guess I can lose that. Can I get to there? Got it. Hopefully I can actually get up this way. It's kind of like a... It's a bit of a maze to climb these things. I always feel bad for Bayek because this looks exhausting. I would hate this activity. <laughs> this looks so awful. Especially because if you fall, you're like definitely dead. Um, you know, Bayek's like superhero, so he's fine, but... Uh, any of us would almost certainly die doing this activity. Okay. So far, so good. I'm not sure about those, like, uh, red granite courses in the casing stone of Hafri's Pyramid. I don't remember that being a thing. Could have been. They did their research really thoroughly on this game, so... Um, it's it's very often the case that when you find something in this game, uh, or le when I find something in this game that I don't already know about, I go look it up and it's accurate, which is pretty cool because I studied this subject uh, pretty extensively, but, you know, no nobody knows everything. They just did so much research that it's just filled with stuff for you to discover, even stuff for an Egyptologist to discover, and that's super fun. Getting farther and farther away from Bayek for some reason. Yeah, it is. Um, pyramids had uh, pyramidions on top, which are sort of like a, just like a carved stone capstone with inscriptions and things, and then those were covered in gold. Um, n I think they did. I think that's in there for the game. Oh yeah, there's there's quite a bit of stuff. Okay, inscription. Uh, oh, the inscription runs. Inscription's a little weird. Uh. Get him an give him an F pair set at Henut. Uh, he found the house, the place of the lady. Um, M pair. Who? Hmm. That doesn't actually make sense to me. Mouth in house. Who is like perception? Um, okay, and then Encore Mensch um, Nesu BT, like King of Upper and Lower Egypt Hufu Dionk, given life Oh, and there's another little inscription here But it's the same as the one below um, I'm not sure where they got this inscription from It doesn't look It looks, it's mostly legit I mean, it looks like real Egyptian uh, Well, there's like 20 different birds Or more um, And they they have different meanings, so uh, a lot of them, a lot of the birds are phonetic, which is why you see them so frequently. Um, yeah, that's true. So, uh, uh, as a general rule, what you read food? towards Is it the faces. Out here? I should have a look. Oh, uh, what do I have to have a look at? I wasn't paying attention. That seems important. <laughs> this way. Oh, there's a little entrance down there. That seems important. Oh, over there. Got it. So read uh, read towards the faces. So it's it's the opposite of what everybody thinks at first glance. Let me see if I can get another look at it. Mm -hmm. Let's just go down a little bit. Oops. Oh, no. Okay. So for, for instance, in this case, you would read... Um, left to right, like the direction of written English. Um, 
and then like this bird uh, on the lower left um, that's an ibis bending over and it's gem it's phonetically gem or uh, in, in Coptic it's chine um, so it's like the two consonants G and M and then you know in, in hieroglyphs we don't really have the vowels uh, we have to use Coptic to try to replace the vowels but it's so it gives you those two consonants and then there's another M after it that re repeats the one in gem uh, and then N F and then gem N F altogether is he found so gemi is defined and then uh, it's like a conjugated verb right gem N F uh, the N makes it past basically uh, or perfective and then the F is the third person masculine singular pronoun so he uh, and then when you put them all together uh, he found um, and yeah, that you read left, right. Okay, I thought I started. Was there genuine ethnic tension between the Greeks and Egyptians, as this game suggests? Um, I think probably yes. Uh, the there's there's debate about that. Um, there, you know, like like everything in scholarship, there's always a healthy debate about like, you know, uh, like whether we're reading too much into the history, because there isn't that much historical evidence for that kind of ethnic tension. Um, but there is some, and there are also like, oops, there are also various sort of circumstantial indicators of a divide, um, between ethnic Greeks and, and native Egyptians. And that's really not surprising. So I, I think they, um, they just kind of ran with it in this game and that, that could be considered like you know, creative liberties, right? They want to tell a story. Um, or you could argue that it's probably realistic because the circumstantial evidence we have definitely suggests that there was division in this society, at the very least. Um, it could have been, you know, pretty cordial or it could have been, you know, more antagonistic, depending on who you ask. Um, but there certainly were like cultural divides in place, and if if you know anything about human nature, uh, you know we're we're pretty tribal creatures, and it's so it's not unreasonable to imagine that that would have resulted in some conflict. Um, Greeks definitely had uh, quite a lot of privileges living in Egypt under the Ptolemaic Greek government, so they <laughs> they were given land, um, land grants, and things that you know that there were people living in Egypt when they got there, so that land would have previously belonged to someone Wake else. What luck you're Man, right. you just sucker punched hey, stand me. Up. Damn, I thought you are lying on it. Lying on what? What happened? My notes. I'm a geographer. I'm a geographer. Cortesius, nice to meet you. Looks like we were attacked. They emptied my pockets. Took my biblical notes episode. Too. What do you mean you biblical episodes? Do you mean like, you um, I Moses and those kind of things? I should on my own. I'm going to find those thieves. They ought to pray to all their gods that my notes are undamaged. Yeah, we're lucky enough to be alive. What do you remember? I gotta remember, find his geography. I was in the head. I only recall the sound of a horse galloping um, away. There might be tracks. Stay here. So kind of yes and kind of no. Uh, there, there's a lot in it. You cannot be serious. There's a lot in it that's accurate. And uh, w one of the things that you have to remember about, like, you know, reading ancient texts is that we we don't assume that they're literally the truth. Um, you know, people don't always write the truth. Everybody has an agenda. Uh, but there are things in there that do kind of have to be true. Like, if they had, you know, if the stories had described, um, like, clothing and mannerisms and things in a way that didn't ring true, then the original audience would have rejected it. So there's there's stuff in there that that definitely must be based on something, um, and also just because like the ancient Israel and ancient Egypt were, um, you know, they were they were trading partners since thousands of years before the pharaonic state even existed. Um, I was trying to find where to go and I failed. They uh, they were in constant contact for millennia, so they knew a lot about each other. Um, and like in the story of uh, Joseph in Egypt, there are Egyptian words embedded in that story that seem to be there to give it kind of a, a flavor, like an Egyptian flavor. And, you know, in the same way that um, I'm trying to think of an example. 
uh, like Crazy Rich Asians has a bunch of like elements of Asian culture embedded in it to kind of uh, serve the narrative. Uh, the biblical texts about Egypt have that kind of stuff in there. How many the languages right now? I know how words. to read a, a lot of languages because that's what I like to do is just like sit around and learn how to read languages. Um, I really only know how to speak two, one and a half, uh, but I know how to read a lot. A lot of ancient languages. Uh, like ten, more than ten, probably. Because that's, I just love like sitting around and studying vocabulary. I also teach Egyptian language courses if you're interested. Uh, so I'm starting on August 21st, I'm starting a, um, Hieroglyphic Egyptian course. It's going to be online Whoa. on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I'm not sure what time that is in your time zone. Oh man, more treasure. Uh, the the story of Joseph. No, well, there's not really any evidence for the story of Joseph being literally true. I I think it's. I mean, the the basic um, starting point with those biblical narratives is to treat them as you know legendary tales they're um you know we don't assume in scholarship that they're like literally true stories uh but it does contain true elements in it and things like uh like like potiphar the name is oh i forget what it is it's like one of the petty names like uh petty petty somebody petty far um, and those, oh, that's creepy. Uh, those are really common in that time period in Egypt. There are a whole bunch of names like uh, Petty Usir is the the one whom Osiris gave. Uh, so a lot of children had these sorts of uh, theophoric. They're called theophoric names because they include the name of a god. Uh, they bear the name of a god, so theophoric. Um, and w we have them in English too, like uh, Nathaniel is a basically the, the Hebrew equivalent. <laughs> I know he does. That was very sweet of him. I proofread that book. Um, I proofread the Coptic, so he was very pleased what is a child with my out here? corrections. It's dangerous. I'm just finding things for Anta. I teach what a Coptic class too, here? which um, it's almost finished now, Looking but all the videos are on YouTube. This way. If you just look for you Christian Casey, you'll find my uh, no. class, and you can still no. join too if you want to. Are you here alone? No, um, I mean, yes. Alone. That boy is hiding something. But yeah, hieroglyphic Egyptian. If if you'd like to join, I don't have the the sign up yet. I'm planning to do that next week during the work week. But uh, you can send me a message. Alan is a sweetheart. He is one of the kindest people I've ever met. Um, I know him really well because I you know I spent years there studying with him and also just kind of hanging out with him. He is, oh, I'm failing at this investigation because I'm trying to do two things at once. Um, he is just the best. Um, I'm biased, though, because he was my, we call it like Dr. Father. Um, so, you know. Someone has dug their way through here. He's very dear to me. He's a good professor. He is one of the smartest people I've ever met in my whole life. Maybe the smartest. Uh, he's been studying this stuff for... Um, 50 years at this point um, and he knows everything about it um, so yeah and I, I, I worked with him a lot he um, was teaching a bunch of classes even when I was like in my dissertation writing phase and I would like voluntarily TA his classes just to like kind of hang out and redo you. a class just that I enjoyed story. Uh, so, like, I took his around. phonology class, like, three times, because I just, like, sat in after I took it the first time. Oh, awesome. Alan's book in this game. Well, that is, um, same, honestly. <laughs> Those are my two favorite Egyptology-related things. Um, and Alan's book is why I wanted to study with him. So I read his book as an undergrad and went through all the exercises, and I just loved it. Um, I loved the way he engaged with ancient language. Um, and I still do. He definitely has a way of looking at language that is much, much more authentic than you find in most academic programs. Yeah, the essays at the end of the chapters are great. Um, 
And I, he did that because he knew that this would be an entry point to the study of Egypt for a lot of people. Uh, so he intentionally designed them that way. And yeah, I like those. Um, I also just like, so, you know, he and I have spent years talking about language. And um, one of the things that I sort of like developed my own thinking on from studying with him is this understanding of language as a very, very fuzzy, mushy kind of thing with lots of flexibility and no real rules. Like all the rules are imposed by us or at best inferred by us from the data that we're given. So things like grammatic, like a native speaker of a language, I'm speaking English to you right now. I'm not thinking about the rules of English grammar. I don't give a shit about the rules of English grammar. I'm just communicating the thoughts that are in my head. Um, so a lot of philology has been very focused on sort of like assigning rules to everything and, and assuming that they hold true. And like he doesn't me. do that. He, know you know, about. really believes in like letting the ancient evidence speak for itself, which is fault. my agenda to too. Work. So uh, we, we got along really well. Pyramid. I'm sorry. We had to do it for Anta. I'm sure Anta is a good friend, but Giza is no place for such foolishness. Why are these children playing in these tombs? Although, if you were a kid, playing in in an ancient tomb would be amazing. I would totally do that. Uh, very dangerous, but it'd be super fun. Okay, I didn't actually listen to what she told me, but we'll find it. There's a little diamond thing on the screen. So how lost can I really get? Okay, we're doing another pyramid. Yeah, those things are really cool. And like that, um, the the coolness of that is actually what I'm trying to teach in my Hieroglyphic Egyptian course. And also in my Coptic course, I, I mention Hieroglyphic Egyptian quite a bit in there. Um, I, For me, the coolest thing about studying Egyptian is seeing this, um, like these longitudinal time worm things. So you get a single word and you can kind of like, you get a word in Coptic and you can trace its history all the way back to like, its first attestation in the Old Kingdom, and you can see like how its meaning sort of shifted over time, and how its uh, pronunciation changed, and all those things. It's fun in the way that like English etymology is fun. Like when I say like, I just I gave you one a, a few minutes ago when I said theophoric names, and I said like God bearing, like theo theophoric. Um, just kind of broke that down into its Greek parts. Everybody loves that. You don't have to be a language nerd to enjoy etymology. And studying Egyptian is like, it is just mainlining etymology. Um, so that's what I'm trying to capture in my online classes, is just um, kind of create a direct of point of access to that thing. Um, because that is, Amun. that's just so fun. I have need of this. Sorry, Amun. I'm stealing from the god. That can't be good. This looks like a sarcophagus. Is it a sarcophagus? Ray Creator, he who steers. Menjet, Slayer of the Serpent, Opet. Um, so Menjet is the, the solar boat, Slayer of Opep. Um, the, the giant serpent who tries to eat the sun. Kitchen, cook, and cuisine. Yeah, it's cucina, I think, in in Latin. And the, the German word for kitchen is, is almost identical. I would guess that they go to like a common Indo-European root, although, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't, I don't think I knew that before, but it definitely makes sense. Um, oh, is it Coquinas? I thought it was... Wait, I thought the word for kitchen was Cucina in Latin. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing it like with the ecclesiastical pronunciation. Cu Cucina or something like that. Maybe I'm just misremembering it.
Oh, it's a boy. This is our pyramid! Hey, you got quite the swing. Just how yeah. many of you are there? Cognate. Then you can actually do the Latin Don't etymology of that. I'm the one responsible. I want the note you stole from the Greek geographer you knocked out. Cognatus is like born with. Back. We've given everything to the bandits from the hills west of the Hemon tombs. They have Anta too, and won't give her back unless we steal for them. Oh. Who is Anta? Actually, pretty bad Our situation. Protector. We were going back to Memphis when they took her. If we don't do as they say, they will kill A her. Peru. Bandits will profit from children. I don't know what that name is supposed to read. A Peru. Bayek means uh, falcon. Stay out of sight. Although the word is actually uh, beige, but they they took an older, the, the hieroglyphic spelling is uh, like beak, uh, b oh my gosh, like b y k are the consonants of the of the word when it's spelled in hieroglyphs. Snake. Is he dead? Yes. Oh man, so many more little jingles. There's more treasure I gotta get. I think I actually skipped a place that I could go. Uh, I'm gonna let the kid find his way out. I do have the DLCs, and I definitely will be playing them. Uh, rest assured. I already went through here. Yeah, I went through there to get to the burial chamber. Yeah, I I actually kind of like the DLCs more than the main quest. I think I don't know. I mean, it's tough to tough to compare, but where are all those jingles coming from? I mean, I can't just leave all that loot up there. There we go. Yeah, the 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 afterlife, uh, the duot parts of the DLCs. Uh, I'm just so in love with those things. Um, Nefertiti's is is spot on how I imagined things being. So like the field of reeds is is a real place from Egyptian mythology that they've kind of recreated as this like like wonderful um, golden hour paradise of like ripe wheat. And oh, I can't get in. Hidden entrance. Great. Um. So I I felt like the way that Nefertiti's afterlife depicts the duat is is so close to the way I imagined it. But then it's it's even richer. Like it, you have the um, like the Anubis guards that you fight, and they're actually like the trapped souls of people, and you free them by fighting them. And um, spoiler, sorry. And um, like the little shards of star, because there's a meteorite in there, and that's a real thing. How would you vocalize? Wosi uh, meire sot penre, I guess. Yeah, that one's not too hard, actually. We have like all the parts of that. How in the world do I get in here? Oh, is it all the way over there? That can't. No, that's the place where the girl was. How do I get inside this pyramid? Um, well, I thought it was a. Like, I used the the Coptic qualitative to capture what how I think it is. I think it's a stative, uh, chosen, chosen of Ray, Ray's chosen one. Um. So, a, as an active participle, that would be like. the choosing one of the sun which doesn't 
I mean, maybe there's a way that that makes sense, but that's not the way that I originally interpreted it. I interpreted it as sort of like a, a passive participle, which in um, in Coptic is where you use the stative. Um, sorry, the qualitative. Uh, so, and then the qualitative is descended from the earlier Egyptian stative. So I just kind of assumed that it was a third-person masculine singular stative, which has the the u on the end as its um, like derivational morpheme, which often doesn't show up in writing uh, because it was probably just a final vowel. Yeah, not really. Although they do exist in the nominal system. So uh, there are quite a few things like, uh, for instance, the word uh, Joyce, really common Coptic word that means Lord. Uh, you see it in the New Testament everywhere, uh, referring to Jesus. Uh, that's related to the word Jise, that means like to raise up. So uh, Joyce is like the, the um, elevated person. Uh, so, you know, the Lord or boss or whatever. How in the hell do I get in this little chamber? Uh, so you can see lots of things like that. Um, and that that's one of my favorite patterns because there's so many of them that have really cool derivations. Like Woin is the Coptic word for light, or Woini in Bohiric. And uh, that probably is related to the word Won that means open. So it's like the opening. Um, and then you can imagine a time before, like, uh, you know, mass production of sheets of glass and things. Uh, the source of light in your house was probably the opening at the top of the wall where the sunlight came in. Um, so there's all sorts of cool stuff like that. Yeah, I've done. I played this whole game before, and uh, oh, it's underground. That's it. Wait, which? Let me see which direction I'm in. Should be on the north side. Um, but I guess if it's not the main entrance, it doesn't have to be on the north side. For some reason, oh, wait. I'm looking like over here on the western side because I feel like there's one of the, oh, one of the buildings. Like the mortuary temple? That could be it. I mean, that, that staircase I've already been in. That's the treasure that I had located already. I'm spending so long finding this. I mean, I doubt that's part of the other pyramid. It's like it's associated buildings and things. In one of the buildings. Yeah, let me. I'll just go look over here. Why not? And if, if I don't find it in here, I'll probably uh, give up and go do some more fun to watch stuff because I don't want y'all to uh, feel bored while I'm just like spending hours searching around. I can always do it during the like I do another stream um, kind of at random I just like jump on and like like grind out resources and stuff um, so that would be a good time for me to go look for this because then I just you know I, it's not really meant to be especially entertaining or anything I just run around and like hunt and do things like that Okay, I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna give up on that. I'll get that treasure later. I'm gonna go find these kids. Or their their friend who was stolen. Uh, well... I've read something about this, actually. Because I wondered that for a really long time, and I feel like I've read a paper that convinced me that it was definitely Narmer. Uh, but that sign that's Mer can also be Ob. Whoa. I don't want the Isu armor. I'm not a fan of Isu stuff. Uh, maybe an unpopular opinion, but I feel like it really clashes with the aesthetic of this world. Um, I'm still going to get it, of course, but I don't use it. It's because, I don't know, I'm not like a huge like Assassin's Creed lore person. Um, although I have read a little bit about it. Um, and I, I think it's interesting. It's just not where I, not the direction I came from. Um, so the Isu armor, the first time I saw it, just seemed really incongruous to me. All right, going to like a cave. I'll get that silica though for sure. I'll go back and get it. There's going to be bandits in here for sure. 
The quest with Arden? This is the camp where Anta is being held. The children gave everything to these bandits, so I should keep an eye out for good days. Ah, uh, yeah, the chamber under the Sphinx. I mean, no spoilers, but you have to do all of the um, stone circles, too. And I'm really far from having accomplished that. Okay. Right now, we're going to go do some strategic murdering of these bad guys who robbed those children. Um, Arden Azunia. I, I think the answer is no, because I don't remember that person's name. Um, although I have played through this game already, so that means that I just forgot. Um, I don't have the best memory for these things. I tend to play for, like... Um, pretty long periods of time and then it just it kind of becomes a blur although I know that I enjoy the whole time I do it so you know time that you enjoy wasting is not time wasted oh he's from FFX oh nice yeah always extremely satisfying it's still because so frustrating too, because you have to have like the exact amount, and if you get to some place early, you can't possibly have collected it all. It's a whole deal. Oh man, that's gonna hurt. Oh, not too bad actually. Let's go assassinate the sleeping person. Final Fantasy. F I've never played Final Fantasy. Is that what it's from? Oh, it's it's like a it's an inner text thing. It's like an allusion to a different game. Yeah. I feel like the tombs are actually like an underrated portion of this game. There's so much cool stuff to find. Yeah, I love the tombs. They're super fun. I even love the like Isu stuff in the to is it Isu? The like the weird like Cyclopean architecture and stuff. Um, I even enjoy those parts, although they they kind of don't fit the setting. That's what makes them cool. There's kind of like this like Lovecraftian quality to them. Oh man, he's facing the other way. I'm gonna try to try to take him out the old-fashioned way. Hey! Oh no, he's facing this way. Ah. Hey, now, now. From the Easter egg, the one. So there's one where you like unlock the thing somewhere near here. I think it's it's like near the pyramids, if I remember correctly. You like there's like the obelisk puzzle. Is he looking this way? Oh, do I want to avenge this guy's death? I should look into this. Yeah, let's do it. Because then I'll get just like free XP for murdering people I was planning to murder anyway. Bonus. It's nice that they're all sleeping. I have, yeah. I've definitely spent uh, a fair amount of time looking at the Scorpion Mesa. It's a, it's a, um, um, something that you like read and talk about a lot in Egyptology courses. Um, so yeah, I've definitely looked at it. I don't know how much I remember. He who dwelleth in his flame, he who is in his hour, red of both eyes, flame seen in the black chaos. By whose eyes the great Manjet will be halted? Asking the great us eternal life. I guess that has to be Ray. He who is in his hour. It's a pretty common epithet. To the great Baba, bull of the baboons, firstborn son of Osiris, and feaster on entrails. Wow. 
he who stands upon the lake of fire and devours the unrighteous souls, those whose hearts have weighed heavy against Ma'at, destroyer, punisher, ravager, judge, most revered harbinger of chaos, we give you honor. Hmm. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that's supposed to be. The answer doesn't come to me immediately anyway. Anta? Oh, Anta! Anta! Oh man, there's gonna be a puzzle. This is definitely a puzzle. Of course. You're Anta, their protector. You know your way back. I don't know what Anta is supposed to mean. Anta. Come on, girl. Anet means fingernail? Means fingernail. That's the closest I can get. Eats the rejected hearts of the souls. Um, no, so that's... That person is Amit. Huh? And he's uh, got the head of a crocodile, the front legs of a lion or a leopard, and the back legs of a hippopotamus. She, I should say. She has those things. Uh, not he. Uh, but it's it's like a a monstrous, you know, chimera. Uh, it is we'll quite quite frightening, actually. Um, if you if you Google Amit A M M I T and do like a Google image search, there's all these like um, artistic depictions of her as like I think there's one that's like photoshopped from real animals combined together, and it is absolutely horrifying. It's like the most terrifying creature I've ever seen. I think that's Bebon, the baboon god, who insults Ray. I, continue. I don't remember that from the story. I probably should. How do I get this up there? Can I throw it? Hey! Uh oh, fail. Let's try again. Ah. Not good. I think I'm gonna try to jump on it and then quickly get one of these things. Is that how you do it? I've probably done this before. I'm sure I've done it before. Maybe if I throw it up there. There we go. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Bebon the god got right up and told Preharakti, Your shrine is vacant. Preharakti took offense at the insult. Oh, you did it yesterday? Well, then you can tell me what to do. Or or you could just like make fun of me if I'm doing it in a stupid way, I guess. Um... to do. I need to get this thing down. Got it. How do I just put things down without throwing them? There we go. I'm going to load it up just so it's like definitely heavy enough to support me. Oh. I did that wrong, didn't I? Hmm. Time to ponder. I need to somehow... I can jump to that? Oh, man. Alright. Let's try it. Uh, is the name Doot attested? You know, I don't know. I... I feel very strongly that her name is Nui. Um, but I can't remember where I've seen that. There is one Coptic text that um, 
I found in like a random paper a long time ago, and then I, I like scanned the paper immediately because I was so excited. There's this Coptic text that does have the name of like 10 Egyptian gods in it, uh, which is awesome because we get like the exact pronunciation of their names, like Usir and uh, Us Usiri and um, AC and all these, you know, the really famous ones. We have all their names. Um, I I wish I could. I hope I can find it. It's on my computer somewhere. Uh, I don't remember the title or the author. Um, I just found it like six years ago and immediately scanned it and put it somewhere in my collection of papers. So yeah, I'll look and see if I can find it. And then I definitely can. Send me a message. I think you can send messages on Twitch, maybe. Um, so yeah, just, just send me a message with your email and I'll try to find it. Guards have been taken care of as we agreed on the third day after the full moon. They will be fi they will find three bladders of wine to amuse them. It won't be long until they will be too drunk to care. Enter the tomb then, do your job, and deliver to my house the next day. Remember, remember power I wield. Keep my name out of it. Even a whiff of this and my exalted position will be compromised. T. All right. Yes, I see the silica. Uh, I'm getting it. I'm gonna get it. Oh, and ancient writings from the old kingdom. Whispers, wow. Well. Ancient writing from the old kingdom. Great. Not actually old Egyptian, but. And also not legible because it's uh, just like random. Uh, s like snippets of hieroglyphic text copied and pasted together so you can't actually read it. Uh, let's see if I can get... Oh! Almost got it. Almost got it. Nope. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Not legible. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, at this time it would have been gosh, more than 2,000 years old. It would like, um, old Egyptian, or even uh, these places that he's in right now, would have been as old to him as, um, like, um, the Peloponnesian War is to us. I could do, I turned off photo mode because I always, like, when I'm running around and doing things with both sticks, I, I tend to turn it on by accident. Um, so I have to turn it off because I'm too clumsy to have it. I love that I'm like the worst gamer in the whole world and I I have a weekly Twitch stream. That's so fun to me. Silica. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, she is. Um, yeah, by like a few hundred years actually. It's something you get used to when you study the subject, but then, um, you know, it, you can, you kind of can never stop reminding yourself of just how ancient Egypt is, because uh, it's, it's too easy to forget, but it is just absolutely ridiculous how long this civilization last, not just lasted, because, I mean, obviously it's still there today, but, um, like, remained culturally similar uh, you know it had so much cultural continuity for millennia and there's just really nothing else like that I don't think there's another example in I'm history right you, of like a um, you know full scale like state and civilization and everything um, that remains more or less unchanged for a thousand years and Egyptian uh, e ancient Egypt was like <clears throat> It, it went through phases and things, but it was more or less unchanged. Um, well, you could say that the cursive script... Uh, so the question is, uh, if you look at Ani, it uses the cursive hieroglyphic script, which is kind of halfway between hieratic and hieroglyphs. Um, so the, the very earliest hieratic text we have um, is a text from... Uh, it was found very recently at Wadi El Jarf. Um, and it's a text describing the uh, shipments of stone to the 
to the building site of the Great Pyramid. And that's written in Hieratic, but it's very, very old Hieratic from the Old Kingdom, ancient writing from the Old Kingdom. Um, and it looks like drawn hieroglyphs. Um, it's, it's not very cursive. Um, what is that? Oh. It's a pile of bones. That's a lot of bones. Um, oh, it's like some, some creepy shrine. Normally the skulls, you can kind of kick them around like soccer balls. So, okay. Uh, Egypt had... How many types of writing? Egypt had many types of writing. Uh, so there was writing and, you know, inscriptions in stone, which is where you see hieroglyphs mostly. Um, and then there were, like, faster, more cursive forms of writing that were, like, they started off as, like, uh, ink on papyrus drawn hieroglyphs, just like if you were to, like, do your um, Egyptian homework in a class today, you would just, like draw the hieroglyphs with a pen on paper. Um, there's an ancient Egyptian equivalent to that, and it started off looking more or less identical to drawn hieroglyphs, but then it changed over time and became more simplified. Um, so hieratic um, would be used when you needed to write faster. So it's the difference between fast and slow writing, essentially. Um, Slow writing tends to be more detailed, and it can be monumental. Uh, so if you walk past a building today and you see like a Latin inscription in stone, that's slow writing. Um, hieratic was used for everything else, like all any you know if you write down a grocery list, um, or you know leave a note for someone or something. That's all a use case for hieratic. So it's it's cursive, meaning that it is um, the signs are sort of abbreviated and they're often linked together. Um, and it's just like ink on paper, and it's it's very simplified. Um, yeah, like cursive and block letters, exactly. Um, and then hieratic developed, and then from hieratic, they then redeveloped cursive hieroglyphs. So like in the Papyrus of Ani... I told you to stay out of sight. I know, but this was our fault, and we thought you could use some help. The horseman is much, much bigger than you. Oh my gosh, this kid wants to help me fight horseman. the bandits? You haven't seen him. He's the most harrowing uh, of them all. Interesting that you should strong. ask, because that's He's actually what like half my out. dissertation is about. Mm. Um, you might have so, notes, probably using them to locate treasures. It's a long I've story, but the the, the short version of it is that um, during the third intermediate be. period, so after the New now, Kingdom, there was like. Um, a decline in power of the Egyptian state and a um, decentralization. So there were lots of to come back to his cave at night, or seek him out as he roams and terrorizes Giza. If it puts a little diamond on his head, I'll just find him. Um, crafting. So, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So okay, third intermediate period after the New Kingdom. You know, things are not. Uh, going so well for the Egyptian state, there's a lot of division, and various um, local sorts of hieratic evolve in that um, in the disunity of the third intermediate period. And then one of those, which developed in Delta and was used in the city of Sais, um, rose to prominence um, with the coronation of Tsamtek and his. Uh, reunification of the country for during the Sayite period. Um, and so he made Demotic, which was kind of his local script, he made that the um, like the standard script for all government business throughout the country. So that that caused it to this this local variation with lots of idiosyncrasies kind of rose to prominence. Um, and uh, took over. So Demotic really is hieratic in a sense. It's a later form of hieratic that has evolved independently um, from from other versions of the script. Um, so it's just it's extremely idiosyncratic. There's lots of different local traditions, and it's just it's just super messy, um, which is part of what makes it fun, uh, but also makes it very difficult. 
so yeah, that's a, that's a short version. Is uh, it's kind of like um, it works just like biological evolution. So it's like uh, you know in, in archipelagos like Darwin's finches, you get uh, in the Galapagos, you get like these little variations in each of these isolated communities. Um, that's kind of what happens with scripts too. Uh, so in the third intermediate, intermediate period, you had lots of isolated communities that weren't really trading notes all the time, and they developed their own variations, and then one of those was uh, catapulted to national prominence. In her book about the Sumerians, Harriet Crawford says that the archaeological evidence for dress does not agree very well with the evidence. I, I assume there's more coming after that. From pictorial art. Oh, that's that's interesting. Um, I I would say that that's demonstrably not the case in ancient Egypt, where like depictions on tomb walls and things show people dressed uh, in clothes that Whoa. look like what we find uh, when we do find, you know, cloth. Rarely, but we do find it. Um, I don't know. Pinar would be a person to ask about that. Egyptologists are so insulated. I don't know that much about ancient Sumerian dress. There are quite a few, actually. If you go to the Met, um, and that, like, on the far northern side of the Egyptian section, there's this long gallery with lots of... Um... Oh, Pinar, she's, she's in there. That's her. P... Peter Gun. She's my wife. She also watches my Twitch stream for like moral support. Oh man, this guy is kicking my ass. <laughs> He's so good. I'm so terrible. Okay, let's do this. Dodge. Nope. Too slow. Oh, can I do that like shield punch thing? Oh. There we go. Got him. Oh man, yeah. New Bentress is great. He provides so many amazing sources. I assume that's on Reddit. I've been wondering for so long who you Bentresh is, because uh, he's definitely an Egyptologist. He very knowledgeable. Um, his like bibliographic knowledge is just, um, you know, complete. It's it's just astounding. Um, or her. It, it might be. Um, you Bentresh might be a woman. I don't know for sure, but I feel like I know this person. I must know them. Like I've probably met them in real life. And I, but I have no idea who it is. And they're like, they they won't tell me. I didn't ask directly, but they're, they're obviously like being kind of coy about who they are. I thought it was uh, Carl at one point. Um, but it's not. Because I asked. Are you asking me? Or are you asking Pinar? Whoa. Oh, cool. I don't think I've seen that. I don't think I've seen a cuneiform text not written in clay. I've, I mean, I've seen them in stone, but not not one written in ink. I don't know. Do we need more Rosetta Stone merch in our lives? We probably do. Oh, we were talking about cloth, too, and I didn't finish what I was saying about that. Uh, in the Met, there's lots of cloth, uh, especially if you go to, like, the north end of, of the wing, um, kind of, like, uh, to the east of the Dender Temple, there's like glass cases that are full of like bolts of linen cloth from excavations. It's pretty neat. Hmm. Did I already go in here? Oh yeah, I got all the way back to Great Pyramid. I didn't go in here because I couldn't find it. Um, I was doing a quest. I was supposed to look for a rider or something. The Bandit Horseman. That's it. 
Oh, he's over here. Got him. You can never have enough Ancient World merch, in my opinion. I think that the British Museum is really like... Um, like, British Museum gift shop. So much cool stuff. I got this, like, Papyrus of Ani umbrella there. Uh, which I think we still have. I think it's here somewhere. Oh, I already murdered him. I didn't confirm the kill. Cortesios is not. Got it. We'll be okay. happy to see this. He just randomly came up and fought me, and I didn't know he was the person I was looking for. I guess I should have suspected, but... <laughs> oh well. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Rosetta Stone bag. It's great. It's like black with a little silver Rosetta Stone on it. Well, the pyramid texts are really tough to read. Um, that it, that is one of the toughest like hieroglyphic yeah. texts you can try to read because they're super Whoa. esoteric. Uh, if you get Alan's pyramid texts uh, and then his um, what is it called? Starts with a C. Not concursus. I'm not. I'm not thinking of the word. Um, so he has a bunch of texts where he's taken all the hieroglyphic texts of the pyramid texts and put them all together, uh, and it's on my website. There's. It's like hosted on my website somewhere. All these PDFs with the individual lines from the pyramid texts. Then if you get his translations, you can. They're all like numbered and stuff, so you can like put the two side by side, um, and and try to work them out. And that's that's what I would recommend doing, at least starting out, is just like put the English translation next to them and try to figure things out because they are very difficult to read. Um, okay, and then there's the... Um, what is that word for like when you put a bunch of different versions of a text side by side? I just can't think of it. Ugh, that's going to drive me nuts. Uh, it's not compilation. Hey! I bring good news. Uh, My notes. Oh, it's a papyrus this, scroll I can't too. Believe it. Concordance. That's it. Concordance. Yes. Uh, it's called Concordance of the Pyramid Text. If you search for it online, you can probably find it. And also, if um, if you send me a message, I'll send you a link because uh, I don't think it's. Is it over? I don't think there's a link to it from my gone. website, but um, it's hosted on my server, so, so I can send you a direct link to now. download the PDFs. Are these the thieves. Oh. Easy, friend. There was a misunderstanding. Oh my gosh. The hands were dog. forced. And these kids need a safe passage back to Memphis, right? Yes, to the house of Neff. With it's all a Saluki, the which is an Egyptian dog breed. It was supposed to be my next stop. Do you know the way? No, but they know their way around. Yeah, they're, they, are, they are really tough. Come along, then. Um, I took several classes with him where we just read pyramid texts. Memphis? So that definitely of makes course. it easier. And also, like, my... I definitely specialize in, like, later stages of Egyptian language. Um, partly just because I find it so much easier to read and sort of, like, more rewarding as a result, because I can kind of read it and hear the words in my head. Um, I cannot do that with Middle Egyptian and Old Egyptian. Um, I can often read Middle Egyptian texts and just kind of read them directly from the from the hieroglyphs, which is fun to do always. Um, but it's just not that once I get to like late Egyptian or, or Demotic or Coptic, I can like actually like hear it in my head, like reading modern language. Oh man, I I think. Um, I think a lot of people will tell you that they are definitely difficult texts, um, and a lot of understanding them. Wait, should I get chain throw or combo? Oh man, I I really like the repeated stabbing of the combo, but I have to get dual swords. But then I can get double power. Okay, let's do it. All right. Um. Yeah, I think I think most Egyptologists, as it, so long as they're being honest, will tell you that those are really difficult texts because the the translations of them are not 
set in stone. Um, you know, no, no pun intended, I guess. Um, the the translation requires a great deal of like creative interpretation. Um, I don't think there's anyone who can just straight read them. Um, Alan would be the closest person, and um, he's he's still you know doing a fair bit of reading between the lines and stuff. Like what does someone has gone with his car? Horace has gone with his car. Ice Ford has gone with his car. You two have gone with your car. Uh, I mean, so the cause like the life force, and it's saying that like, um, like the 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 deceased person has to be united with their ka in the afterlife in order to have um, like like an ongoing. Um, oh, I screwed this up. Damn it. Um, in order to survive, basically, right? They have to have. They have to connect with their ka to survive in the afterlife. So that's basically. Yeah, you are boned and your bone is boned. I have no idea what that means. There are so many things like that in there. In fact, there's there's an entire book, a really, really terrible, goofy book uh, called The Dawning of the Moon of the Mind, which is all based. The, the entire premise of the book and, like, all of its arguments are like rooted in the fact that like Alan's translations are sort of inscrutable and like the text is just really esoteric and she like weaves this whole like elaborate intellectual house of cards around that fact alone um so um yeah you're not the first person to notice they are they are definitely super obtuse um so yeah what does that mean I couldn't begin to tell you what that means. And there, there are many lines in the pyramid texts where, um, like, I've I've read them ten times and I still have no idea what it's actually trying to say. Uh, there are um, there are lines in the pyramid texts that are probably gibberish. So there there are spells in the pyramid texts that are just like random nonsense sequences of sounds uh, that are like. Um, ta ti ta ta puppy papa or something like that just like you know abracadabra type stuff which no one can read and probably no one could ever read so yeah pyramid texts are weird they're they're definitely difficult texts um, and then really the, the earlier you go in Egyptian the less sort of certainty we have about the language because all of our knowledge is from like the present backwards um, so, you know, starting at Coptic, we can basically speak the language, and then going backwards, it just gets worse. When they have been recited, says Jed Medu, and yeah. Um, I think even by the time of the pyramid texts, uh, Jed Medu um, is, is formulaic, but, and, and it means basically like magic spell. I will show you all of Giza's secrets. The gods are smiling. You are a true hero. Keep quiet. Head down. This guy was super easy to rescue. I didn't encounter any resistance whatsoever. But yeah, they probably would have been recited, almost certainly. Uh, these were these were spells that were carved into the stone from. Um, they were very definitely carved from a papyrus original. Uh, we have evidence from that in the text themselves that shows that they were actually carved into stone from a um, like a hieratic source text. Um, and then we can see from the multiple attestations that this text uh, developed and evolved over time uh, because we have multiple witnesses to the same spells. What was the importance of Heliopolis, for example? There's a line which says, "My father is a Heliopolitan. I too am a Heliopolitan." So it was the center of the of the of the cult of Ray. So like the center of sun worship. Uh, that's why it's called Heliopolis, like Sun City. Uh, it's called Oni in in, um, in Egyptian. Um, but why does it say, "My father is a Heliopolitan. I too am a"? Hel I don't know. Freedom. That must have had some kind of like cultural significance. That's. Now, pretty lost on me. Some tombs. 
Have I helped another criminal of Egypt? Oh, that is right. You are a Medjai. No, not a criminal. I'm an opportunist. Uh, I know your kind. What did you dig up this time? It sure caught the eyes of those bandits. A ring of unparalleled riches. Oh, I remember this see, quest. It's like him and his three buddies, and they're trying to find this me around trying to find it. ring. Me? I just want what it is worth. You think I enjoy being a scavenger? Yes. Hmm. Come, follow me to my palace. My safety is your duty, is it not? You saw how dangerous it is out here. Uh, what happened suppose. to Nisbas in Coptic? Yes, is it a thought that Nisbas? Oh, really? Is not a Nisbah? What is a Nisbah of? Not Nisba of? Not all. Jehuti. You should join us. We could use Jehut. a strong warrior like yourself. To get you out of all the trouble you um, get yourself into. I don't know whether Thoth is a Nispa. I yes, it's normally it written with the us, you know? with like the dual but marker, but is that the is that like a this ring way of writing the, the Nispa? Sometimes. Yeah, Nispas are no longer productive in Coptic. So they, they do survive. Oh, there oh, are there are quite a few words that come from Nispas. I'm trying to think of an example. Let's see. What is an example of a word that comes from a nispa? Um, I guess like sechti, uh, uh, field worker, peasant, um, survives as uh, shos, shosa, um, and that that's a nisba, but it, it's just lost its like final e ending and um, it's not productive so you, you in Coptic you, you can't take a word and just put e on the end and turn days. it into an adjective the ring? Um, it's okay, just calm down. you just can't Russian do it anymore uh, but some some words do survive that were brother. originally nispas but then the became ring? sort of lexicalized so they they okay. were derived yeah. words but then they became words in their own right luck is always on your side isn't it Oba? If it was, I'd have my ring. Our ring. Yes. Yes. <sighs> that ring is worth millions of drachmas. Cleopatra would lay you if you gave it to her. <laughs> we should check for our other brothers. They have the ring. Such a silly thing. There are all around here. I'll start there. Rashidi went south. Likely ran into those bandits. Rashidi is in this box. The fool. Although it's Arabic. Rashidi is in danger. I have to get him out of that bandit camp. Okay, I'll just hold the track. That's way easier. Oops. Wow. Fail. Oh man, I'm getting sleepy. Okay. It's interesting that the other old Egyptian literature, other than the pyramid texts, are not that difficult. Yeah, uh, like uh, Weni or Harhuf are not that hard to read. Uh, in, in fact, I would say that they're really highly legible. Um, there's that other text. Uh, what is it called? There's one text that's like super hard. I can't think of the name of it. Um, also an old Egyptian text. I really want to fight someone with this huge axe. Whoa. Jump. The Great Sphinx. Even the Egyptians would have. Yeah, I, I think so I too. Expected. He always says that it's smaller. Than, how, like, how big do you want a statue to be? It's like Whoa. three stories tall. <laughs> oh, this is cool. We can go look at this. Uh, so this is the Dream Steel of Tutmosis the Fourth. And I think this is really it. I mean... Mm, I don't know what those... No, it's not really it. They copy-pasted the glyphs. Man! Um, well, you can find you can find a nice facsimile of this online if you just Google for it. Dream Seal of Tutmosis IV. Uh, it's a cool text. So, the story is that uh, Tutmosis IV was, like, sleeping... Uh, near the Sphinx and it was all covered in sand 
and he had a dream in which the Sphinx came to him and told him that if you uncover me, uh, free me from my sandy prison, I will make you Pharaoh of Egypt. Um, and then he did become Pharaoh, and he erected this stela that tells the story in hieroglyphs. It's pretty neat. It's one of the coolest hieroglyphic texts ever, uh, because it's just such a such a weird circumstance to be preserved in stone like that forever. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, you know, it's like it's it's not a new thing that people poke fun at other cultures. That's definitely as old as time. Um, and I think I think the Romans did have a sort of like negative, like very propagandistic view of Egypt because they were basically um, they were just using Egypt to uh, to feed the people and enrich the the Roman state. They kind of just created a trade monopoly based on exporting Egyptian grain. Um, so they kind of had to think that Egypt sucked because it um, rationalized them just like taking over the country and stealing from it. Civil strife and sudden disturbances. Because of the fanaticism and superstition of its inhabitants. Ignorant as they are of the law. Hey, what? I'm just gonna take this dude out. I'm just gonna take you out, dude. Laws and unacquainted with civil magistrates. Um, I think what he is describing is the fact that. Uh, the Egyptian people really didn't like being ruled by Rome, um, and for obvious reasons. I mean, the, Rome was just unapologetically stealing their wealth to export it to themselves. Um, and they, they're they quite different culturally. I mean, I, it's pretty obvious to me that like Egyptian art and architecture is vastly superior to Roman, uh, which is really just mostly copied from... Greek stuff, um, and also just really unattractive. Uh, but, you know, that's subjective. People will disagree. But they're, they're different enough that someone who liked one would probably dislike the other, because I love Egyptian things, and um, I, I absolutely despise Roman art and architecture. Um, although I really like Schenkel's like, neoclassical buildings in Berlin. They're great, but he kind of he added his own, like, modern spin to it, which is really cool. <laughs> you know, like, you almost expect Tacitus to, like, call them uppity or something. It's just, like, this, this term that, like, an oppressor uses to describe people who don't like being mistreated. It's like like the British in India or, or whatever. It's like they're they're bad because they don't like us like you know oppressing them for hundreds of years. Like yeah, I think maybe you're the bad one in this situation. Although the Egyptians were certainly no angels. They held vassal states and you know exploited other. They like raided Nubia constantly for wealth. Um, so yeah, they they weren't innocent, but they weren't Rome. It's it's you have to look pretty far in history to find a culture worse than ancient Rome. Uh, they were monsters. <laughs> what did the Athenians say about Sparta? They're like these frat bros are going to get us all killed. Also, like, there's a reason that every fascist movement um, falls in love with the Romans. Um, it's not just a coincidence. 
There are lots of parallels. They're both very awful people. I say as I like hey, what? murder twenty people in cold blood. Time is up. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> what? I've never used the axe before. Apparently, I was not expecting it to be that amazing. Oh man, that's so awesome. That's a very effective weapon. I think if there's one lesson you can learn from history, it's that everyone hates everyone else. That's pretty... Uh, that's pretty consistent. People like to hate people from other cultures. It's just a thing we do. Rashidi? Free, huh? Rashidi. You know my name. Come with me. Yeah. Get you out. I'm just gonna pull his ass out of here. Oh man, more treasure. Oh well. Nope. I'm gonna control myself. Kitten. 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 Stop that. <laughs> everyone hates everyone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, please quote me as saying that, because it's like, it's so true. I mean, come on, like, any, it doesn't even, you don't have to read history very far to see that just like everyone hates everyone else. I mean, inheritance of land is definitely a bad idea. I'm sure glad people came up with that one. This ring you have found is certainly sought after. You know about the ring? Oba and Nepti said you might be in trouble. I think you would all be better off giving up this life, hmm? We could, if we had the ring. Wait. You mean you don't have it? Turo punched me straight in the face and took off to the Hemon tombs to trade it. No, oh, is that true? Who is Turo? A brother. Ah, of course. I will go make sure he is all right. Go back to your brothers. You'll be safer with them. <laughs> Hardly. Yeah. I wonder what tale Turo will tell me. You guys are not very brotherly. Oh. Alright, let's go get this Turo fella. What are you doing way out here? Who said that? That wind will raise the suns. Yeah. Going through the building for some reason. Wow, skills. Equestrian skills. I oh, was it not. I thought they were I thought they were like toxic masculinity the city oh it doesn't I spent so much time playing Odyssey trying to um, like rewrite history and make Athens win the Peloponnesian War, but you can't actually, like, affect change. Like, whatever territories you conquer, you just lose five minutes later. So you just, like, run around, like, reconquering the same places. Um, I think that's why I gave up on that game, actually. Because I was just like, well, I can't actually affect any change. I'm not doing anything. Also, my biggest complaint about Red Dead 2, which is otherwise an amazing game, but the fact that I can't just shoot Micah in the face is just, it just like ruins that game for me. He's such a terrible character. He is just like like 
terrible from the beginning, like no arc. Uh, what's this? Ah. Uh, his hand was eaten. Oh. Bruce. The hyena must have swallowed the ring too. Oh, come on. This is absurd. <laughs> Bayek is just like so done with this shit. Hyena swallowed the hand with the ring on it. But left the rest of the tasty corpse. Must keep my bearings. Yeah, I got it. There's a big target in front of me. It's a good game. It's not a bad game. I wouldn't say that. Um, but I, I think I think Red Dead Redemption 2 actually is a a bad game. Uh, and that's not going to be a popular opinion at all because everyone loves that game, and it is beautiful. But gameplay wise, like an open world game where you have no agency and you fail a quest for like walking in a slightly different direction for a second is just really frustrating. Um, but yeah, Odyssey is a good game, definitely. Okay, yeah, I, I've talked to a number of people who said they hate it, but like, most most people who talk about it at all just like, continually celebrate it, and I, I think it's kind of a bad game in terms of gameplay. Like, I mean, the graphics are amazing, the, the world is amazing, but the, the game itself, like the part that you're supposed to enjoy, is not fun. It's it's really obnoxious. Um, like, you know, Super Mario or Pokemon. Like, none of these games have amazing graphics, but they're, they're good games. You have fun playing them. Whoa. Yeah, Bayek definitely doesn't always succeed either. I feel like I... Yeah. I don't really have the feeling in this game that I'm not Whoa. in control of my choices, though, even though I'm not always. You know, there is a story that needs to be told, and you are kind of like, you know, some some things you don't have any say in, but the, the quests just don't feel like uh, a ride at Disney World, where just like the whole thing is on rails. Mm, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. Fenchurch. Why are you doing this? was brutal. I gotta fish out the ring now. I haven't even got that far uh, in Valhalla. Although that is that is really a great game, except for all the stupid like we took the keys to this building and just like toss them in the bushes and you have to go look for them. Except for that constant problem, that's one of the best games I've ever played. Valhalla is so good. Um, and then if you get like the little exploding arrows, you can use them to break open the locked doors, and like that, that's huge. I wish they would stop patching that bug out of it, because that is, makes the game so much better. And you can just skip all those, like, key searches. It's <laughs> rude. Jackson Crawford's channel... Uh, no. Whoa. Just insulted for a moment. Yeah. Ranvi went to North America. Any idiot. 
Yeah, I, I don't really know that subject, but just playing the game, it's clear that there's a lot of detail in there. Um, so it's it's it seems like they did their homework, and like I do know this subject very well, and um, it, like there's things in here that I've never seen before. Like this is this is the thing I study the most, and I learn things from this game. Clearly, they do Whoa. very thorough research. Oh, cool. That sounds fun. I have bad news. You lost the ring? You lost the ring? You lost the ring? Wow. Turo is dead. Oh, tragic. And the ring? <laughs> yes. Quite oh, unfortunate. These guys don't mess around. And what of the ring? Did you find it? I found it. Did you not hear me? About Turo. Oh, the, yeah, because you can't highlight this people with the fault. eagle. That is, um... I don't care which one of you gets it. I should be on my way now, brothers. Are you not sad? Your friends have died. In Giza, a friend dies Yeah, I, I like tagging the people, too, because I like planning my route into the fort. I don't really do it that much on this stream, because I'm normally just, like, talking and, you know, looking at things. Uh, but when I play by myself, I actually, like fully plan a path through the fort where I like take people out without being spotted and and all Where that kind it? of stuff. Neck, the ring. That was a signet ring by the way. It had like a cartouche on the top, uh, which is also a real thing. Okay. So I'd have to start another quest, but it's about about at my time limit. It is 11 p.m. Yeah, and I'm super sleepy. It's past my bedtime. I'm so old. Uh, so I'm going to go find this papyrus, and then I guess next time we'll solve a papyrus puzzle. Maybe solve two, because I, I have another one outstanding, the one where there's that like boat in the desert. I can't remember where it is, but I'll find it. Oh, this is a this is a mastaba. So these tombs are called mastaba tombs, and they're kind of just like big stone rectangles. Um, often they're like fully solid stone rectangles, but sometimes they have like halls and rooms inside them. And then something called a serdab, which is like a uh, it's a it's a little slit high up in the wall um, with a statue inside of this little like closet like room, and the statue can like see out through the slit, and it like stands in for the um, burial is Sinetra a causative of it um Sinetra yeah yeah I didn't really think of it being a causative of a noun um, so Netra can also be an adjective verb uh, which means like holy or sacred uh, so it could be a causative of an adjective verb which makes it just a regular causative verb have fun Lexi I assume it's it's sometime early in the day there Oh, you must be, you must be far east of me. Um, definitely much, much farther east of, of Lexi. Stone fungus and Giza three pyramids stand tall. On the top of the smaller one, you can see quite a lot. Even two mushroom-shaped rocks, the smaller of which I lay atop of. Oh, I know where that is. That's going to be one of these like white desert type, um, rock shapes. So I will go find that next time. Um. You should definitely go to sleep if you are somewhere in East Asia and it's like, I don't know, like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Um, and I'm going to go to sleep too because it's 11 p.m. and I'm tired. But yeah, next time we're going to go solve some papyrus puzzles. Six, wow. Uh, where are you? Just out of curiosity. Japan, okay. Um... Yeah, it's way past your bedtime. All right, but hopefully I'll see y'all next time. I'll be here at the same time next week, and maybe sometime in between too, if I can uh, manage it. Normally have a pretty busy work week, but see what I can do. Oh man, those footprints! I love these footprints. That's so nice. That uh, looks. That's like indistinguishable from real life. That's amazing. Okay. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for coming, and uh, bye everyone.